Welcome to the Global Impact Charity Voices series, a way for you to connect with the charities and causes you care about most. Hi, my name is Kim Goob and I'm with Global Impact and I'm happy to be joined by Annie Bergman with Heifer International. Welcome, Annie. Thank you uh, for having me. Well, as part of our Charity Voices series, we wanted to get to know Heifer International and the powerful work that you do. So if you could just tell us a little bit about your role and what is one thing that we don't know about Heifer International that many people would like to learn more about? Sure, absolutely. I am the creative director for Heifer International, which means I oversee a lot of our work in the marketing department uh, to make sure that, that we are on brand and on message, but it goes a little bit further than that. I work really closely with our communications team to make sure that, that what Heifer does comes through in all of those marketing messages and in a way that each audience that we speak to can really understand it and internalize it. And I think the one thing that, that we've tried really hard to express and, and get through over the last few years is that most people know us as the livestock organization and, and for good reason. We've, we've done amazing work in, in that regard, but that it goes so much further than that. Um, livestock is, is the beginning point for what becomes transformational change in these communities that we work with around the world. Um, we're working to bring people to a living income, which means that they can really weather any setback. They can send all of their children to school. And in a situation like this, in a global pandemic, they have the savings and the resources to get through it. Fantastic. And what specifically drew you to the mission of Heifer International? Yeah, I did my education work, my graduate work uh, with marginalized communities in, in Australia, with indigenous communities. And I came back to the United States and, and started working in journalism. And when I discovered Heifer, it was a natural fit because I could take my journalism and communication skills and, and talking to people um, and combine it with the work that I was really passionate about, which was helping people who, who have been pushed out or, or who are marginalized. So it was a natural marriage for me and, and I've been here for almost 13 years now and, and it's, it's incredible. Great. And so we'd like to know a little bit more about how Heifer has been responding to COVID-19. So can you talk about what were some of those initial response what does that look like? And how did you all respond to all the countries that you're, you're serving in? Absolutely. I, like so many organizations and, and people around the world, uh, I think the first and most immediate impact for us was that we became a remote organization, almost entirely remote. Uh, we did talk to all the countries, the 21 countries where we work around the world and, and told them, you know, follow the local and national advice that you're getting in your area. Um, but, you know, it, it resulted in a lockdown for a lot of people. And that meant that our staff were really cut off from the rural communities where we work. So we knew we needed to pivot and, and change what we were doing pretty quickly so that those people weren't left alone uh, through this time. And it's looked different in, in a lot of different places, depending on the circumstances. But in Kenya, for example, we have um, passed out a lot of PPE, personal protective equipment, to extension workers and the producer organizations that we work with. We've passed out hand washing stations. We've told people how to spot the virus and how to maintain social distancing measures. Um, we're taking it you know, very seriously and, and keeping people as safe as possible. But what this has underscored for us is how dependent we are on the farmers who we work with. They are the ones that produce the food that we need and that people around the world need. Um, and in a lockdown, 
it's been interesting because one of the, the best ways that we've been able to work with these farmers is to help them create direct to consumer uh, supply chains where they are growing and producing food on their farms and getting it straight to the consumers in these cities that have gone almost absolutely quiet because of the travel restrictions. So tell me a little bit more about what you're seeing on the ground and, you know, if you could share any stories about how people are coping and responding. Sure. This pandemic has hit the rural communities really, really hard. Um, in Ecuador, for example, we did a study and we found that people are eating fewer meals a day. 97% um, of our farming families have reported a loss of income. 86% of those have seen their income reduced by half. Uh, in Bangladesh, it has set the country back decades in terms of poverty. 95% um, of households are reporting a re reduction in income. Um, by the end of the year, 132 million more people could be going hungry. So again, this is underscoring the importance of local food systems and the farmers who, who grow that food. Um, we do have a lot of success stories. Of the, the people that we work with in our communities, um, you know, social, social networking and um, social capital is a, is a big thing that we talk about. And we have seen our farmers and the resources they have they've been sharing it with their communities in need. In Ecuador, uh, one of the biggest um, direct to consumer um, successes that we've had is, and the farmers are, are growing organic natural produce and have developed ways to get it to people in the cities. And they are, are putting together these food baskets um, and delivering them to people in, in Quito, Ecuador, where grocery stores have been shut down or supply chains have been severely affected. So we're getting, we're getting good food in front of, of people who, who need it. In the United States, we've been able to donate more than 15,000 pounds of food. We've been um, able to give food processing workers some, some jobs. We've created jobs. Um, so for, for as bad as this pandemic has affected rural communities, the, the farmers that we work with, their entrepreneurial spirit and their amazing ability to adapt is, is shining through and they are, they are the essential workers. They are the ones getting us the food that we need. Thank you, Annie. And before we wrap up, I think it's important to also outline anything that you've personally learned from your experience um, coming, well, just, just responding and just helping, uh, you know, vulnerable people across the world um, get through this, this pandemic and, and to continue the work that Heifer does um, with lifting people out of poverty. What is, what is something that you feel that you've learned or your team has learned coming through this, this pandemic and, and the response that you guys have been doing? Yeah, resilience is an interesting thing. I think uh, every day working at Heifer, I see how resilient people can be and, and their capacity to sort of build that resiliency muscle. Um, as this goes on and on, um, it's, it's almost a skill or a muscle that you do have to develop. Um, and it's easy, I think, for especially, you know, people in the United States and, and myself, it's easy to feel depleted when everything has been so restricted. But I see these stories and these successes that are happening with people who have such new resources that, um, you know, I, I'm inspired by their ability to come together and connect. And it's, it's something that I've learned that when, when I can help other people, that really helps me and it, it sort of replenishes those stores. So yeah, helping others I think is, is just the key that we can take away from the farmers that, that we work with every day at Heifer. 
Well said. Well, I appreciate you joining us today and sharing more about the work that you do at Heifer International. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. And, um, and uh, if you would like to learn more about Heifer, please uh, visit us on charity.org slash give. And thank you again for your, for your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be part of this. That's all for today's Charity Voices series. Thank you so much for joining. Stay up to date on the work of all of our wonderful charity partners by following Global Impact on Facebook and Twitter and visiting our website, charity.org give.